doing I cannot believe it's July well we're almost to the middle of July uh, where's this year gone <laughs> I have no idea <laughs> oh I hope you're all doing well if you're new to the channel my name is Bev McCullough from Flamingo Toes and I'm super excited to be here today we are sewing through my Meadowland quilt it is such a fun quilt to sew I am having a blast seeing all your different versions it's so fun um, and I love I love seeing it in Sweet Acres fabric, of course, but it's also really fun to see it in other prints as well and to see your takes on even if you're using Sweet Acres, you know, I have some people we have some people changing it up and making their blocks with different fabrics and I love that. It's so fun. So today we are on our week six and I can you believe it's six weeks already. Uh, we are making up our last block of the quilt and um it's next week we will i broke the assembly into two sections so even if you're not on last this last block you have time to catch up and you guys know the videos will be available for you to watch whenever you would like so feel free to dive in at any point oh you guys it's hot here in tennessee and we don't have any air conditioning <laughs> our air conditioning broke on saturday some we didn't know at the time we had the guy come out today and uh, apparently there's some hole it's leaking freon and it can't be fixed so we have to order a new part which takes a week so that's gonna be really fun it's gonna be hot here this week so fortunately the house is relatively cool today because yesterday we had rain and we were able to kind of keep fans going in the windows. So if I'm hot by the end of the video, if I look red, you know why, because I've actually shut the door so that the noise is down. I didn't turn on like the full light, so the wall behind me like look a little bit dark, but I was really trying not to roast myself this week. <laughs> so uh, fingers and toes crossed that we get our air fixed quickly and that the nights cool off enough that we can cool down the house during the day. Fortunately, everything else is fine. Power works, uh, water works, all those things. So I don't really have anything to complain about. Well, let's see, I don't have anything to complain about today. By Wednesday when it's 90 degrees and I don't have air conditioning, you might hear grumbling. If you hear rumbling from the state of Tennessee, you know that's me complaining about the heat. <laughs> so let's see who's here. I wanna see how you are all doing. Oh, let's see, over on YouTube, we have Trisha and Leona, Ju Judy's here from Vermont. Hey, Judy. Merle's here. Uh, Therese is here. It's raining um, in sunny, oh, so much for sunny South Carolina, she says, but the rain has cooled things down. I could deal with a little bit of that, <laughs> Teresa. Linda's here from New Jersey. Deborah's here from Murfreesboro. Hey, neighbor. Danine is here. Uh, Carol, Leslie, Christy, Bambi. Hey, Bambi. Uh, Cynthia's here. Terry. Oh my gosh, so many friends. Christy says, sorry about my AC. I know, it's really no fun. <laughs> Let's see, over on Facebook, Wendy's here. Hey, Wendy, and Pam's here from hot Florida. Uh, Lori's here from Canada. <laughs> Lisa's here, Janice is here. Uh, she says she's in Nova Scotia, close to 80, which is hot for us. I bet it is, uh, Janice. Lindy's here, hey, Lindy. Your quilt's looking fabulous. Uh, Pamela's here. Oh, I'm excited that you guys are all here. So fun. Oh, I'm missing comments here. Sorry, it's not scrolling. Hey, Linda. Oh, and Pamela's here from Southern Indiana. Okay, you guys, I'm excited. So here's what we're doing. This is the pinwheel block and it's um, sections. We're gonna sew this. This uh, will eventually look like a full pinwheel. You can see it in the quilt behind me up in the top corners. But because I wanted these pinwheels to really nest in tight with the rows, um, and rather than have a whole lot of space between the flower row and the star row, we're gonna assemble this in sections. So I'm gonna show you guys how to do this. It's really quite simple in the pattern. It walks you through it. The only thing is if you decide you want to do directional fabrics, I'm gonna give you some tips on how to sew these half square triangles so that you can do that easily. And we'll have to get a little creative with how we sew the blocks together if you wanna keep the directional fabrics the same. So we'll talk about that in a little bit. 
Um, I wanna hit a couple other things before we start, and then we're gonna dive in because this block, I wanna make sure we have um, a lot of time to spend on this block and the different, the four different ways to lay this block out so that the directions all stay the same. Um, so um, I've told you guys about Fat Quarter Shop's free summer sew-alongs. They're really fun. The Halloween one just finished, so we finished that up. I showed you guys that last week. If you missed last week's video, you can go to my blog and check it out. Um, tomorrow kicks off the Christmas mystery sew along and it's called evergreen. It's so cute you guys It does make a mini size again, so it's perfect for table toppers or I'm gonna use mine um, On the wall in my entryway because I love to do a seasonal mini quilt in the in the Entryway of my house, but I need to get another like mini quilt wall in the house going so that I can change them out there as well I just love the texture that mini quilts add to the wall especially when you do kind of a gallery wall setting so that you have multiple different designs and sizes and things like that. So that's really fun. So that kicks off tomorrow. I have a link in the video description today for you to the Fat Quarter Shop blog. And in it, you can read all about the mystery quilt. You can get a link in that blog post to their kit, um, which is in um, Sharing Chelsea's Christmas Fabric this year. You can sew with whatever you like. You can grab from your stash. You can pick a different collection. I'm using a Christmas collection from Riley Blake Designs that's brand new. It's called Twas, as in Twas the Night Before Christmas. It's really cute and vintagey, you guys. It's got reds and greens and pinks. Um, I'm really excited for you to see it. And once you see tomorrow's block or section, I guess it's not really a block, you'll be able to kind of see where the mini quilt is going. <laughs> so it's a good, um, it's gonna be really cute, you guys. I think you're gonna love it. And it's a free sew along. So definitely, even if you don't have time to make up the mini quilt right now, go download the patterns every week, come check out my blog, and I'll be talking about the fabrics I'm using. And then I think when I put it all together, I'm gonna add some sashiko stitching with my Baby Lock sashiko machine and um, outline um, the blocks so that it adds a cool texture to that. So that's my plan. I'll keep you guys posted every week as we go, of course. So make sure you check my website tomorrow for that because I'll have the link straight to the Fat Quarter Shop pattern for you guys. So, oh, uh, Doe's here. She says, hello from a sunny Ohio. I think it's sunny everywhere. Is anybody? Well, I guess Carrie's, uh, somebody up in Nova, Nova Scotia. Let me see. Is it Carrie? No. Janice in Nova Scotia. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, so uh, that is the big thing. The other thing is I want to go over our schedule. So here we are on the Meadowland Sew Along. These are our dates. So today is the 10th. We're sewing up the corner pinwheels. Then I've broken up our assembly into two sections just because it's a little bit of a, you know, it's not your traditional quilt with the rows or the, you know, just one block. So we're gonna talk next week about how to assemble the center and I'm gonna have some tips for you guys about that. And then the last week is the uh, borders and finishing. So that will be really fun and we will have cute farm quilts at the end. And then um, we will jump right into our next sew along, which is the Spooky Lane quilt. That is a, a row quilt that I designed to go along with my uh, Haunted Adventure fabrics that are out right now. We are going to start July 31st and we will um, sew up this really fun quilt and you guys are gonna love it. And then we'll have Halloween quilts all ready for October. So that will be really cute and so fun to sew. So I'd love for you guys to join in with me with that sew along. And if you haven't made up your Meadowland quilt yet and you love this pattern, you can still join me for uh, the retreat at Stitch in Heaven in August. It's the first week in August. I think there are a few spots left. I would love to sew with you guys. If you go to the link in today's video description for teaching and events, you can check out all the places that I have upcoming as far as retreats and things like that that I'm teaching at. So I would love for you to join me at one of those. Um, and if you are interested in having me come teach, you can email me about that as well. <laughs> okay, you guys ready for giveaways? Who's excited for giveaways? Woo hoo, giveaways. <laughs> I promise not to do that again. <laughs> that was really weird. <laughs> oh, you guys. Okay, so let's do giveaways. <laughs> now I'm red because I... 
<laughs> I'm ridiculous. Not because I'm hot. No, I'm getting hot. Oh, you guys, you're very patient with me. Okay, so every week I have a giveaway, and this is my way of saying thank you guys so much for tuning in, sewing along with me, and just how awesome our community is. I just love hanging out with you guys. So they're really easy to enter. All you have to do is leave a comment on the video, whether you're watching on Facebook or YouTube, or whether you're watching live or later in the week. And I go through um, at the end of the week, before the like before next Monday's video, I gather up all the comments and I draw a random winner and they win this week's prize. But the important thing is that you check the next week. If you comment and you want to see if you won the prize, you have to come back the next week to see if you're the winner because I can't really hunt people down. I've tried that and they don't get the notifications. So come back and see if your name was called. Um, otherwise your prize goes back in the kitty and um, somebody else will win it later. <laughs> <laughs> so last week we had a really fun prize. This is Fat Quarter Shops Limited Edition. They have the sew sampler boxes that come out every month, but throughout the year they do um, seasonal boxes that are really fun, you guys. So I'm giving away my, my Liberty box from this year. So this is from Fat Quarter Shop, and the boxes are always a mix of fabric and notions, and you get a free pattern, which is awesome. So this is the Sweet Land of Liberty box. Oh. And you get a little card that shows you all the cool things in the box. So in here we have a darling Lori Holt measuring tape. These are perfect for your purse. I always carry a measuring tape in my purse because you never know when you're going to need to measure some cute piece of furniture to see if it fits in your house. <laughs> um, that, so that's Lori's. These are um, Bohen needles and they're patriotic. Look how cute these are, you guys. Oh, glare. Uh, they're red, white, and blue pins. And they're really fine, and um, they are one and a quarter inches, red, white, and blue pins. We should always match our pins to the project, I feel strongly. <laughs> then one of Lori's Cute Cuts rulers. This is her little, it's a four and a half inch ruler. It's awesome. It has like um, on the reverse side, the, the paint, the pink or reddish color is textured, so it's not going to slip around on you and it's perfect for trimming. Sorry, my fan is making a little glare there. It's hot. <laughs> so these are perfect for trimming um, half square triangles and little um, stitch and flip blocks. I love these, and they're also great for retreats. Throw one in your, in your kit for your retreat and you'll be set. Um, there are four very cute coasters in here. I think there's four. Um, I opened them last week and then I had regrets because I couldn't open, get them back in the box. No, there's only two, but they're those really nice stone coasters that are super absorbent. So, and they're of course, Liberty. See, I'm on the struggle bus with this box. Okay. So it says, um, land of the free. And then I think the other one says home of the brave. So those are really cute. And then of course the great fabric bundle, this is stateside fabrics. And I believe it was, what did we say last week, Sweetwater? Yes. Um, so this bundle, look how cute you guys this is. It's got these great Americana colors. And then you get this free quilt pattern for this apple pie quilt. Isn't this darling? I love it. And it's 27 and a half by 36 and a half. And you get the instructions in here. And it even tells you if you want to finish it, like what you could buy for the binding and then how much backing you need. So this is last week's prize. You guys can sign up with Fat Quarter Shop if you want to get um, notifications on future boxes and things like that so you don't miss out on these. I think they're amazing boxes. They're always such a great value. And who doesn't love getting like a cool unknown prize thing? <laughs> it feels like a prize even though you've paid for it. It's a prize because you don't know what it's co what's coming and all the fun things that are in it. I love it. Um, so our winner is Dolores Rast. She ca commented over on YouTube last week. Dolores Rast 8543 is what her um, YouTube handle is. So Dolores, you are the winner of the Liberty Box. And I would love for you to send me an email, bev at flamingotoes.com to claim your prize. Send me your mailing address and I'll get this out in the mail to you this week. So yay, Dolores. So... We have a very fun week this week. All the good things in the... <laughs> hey, Linda. She says she's here late. Um, 
No worries, Linda. Hi, Dawn. I love Lori Holt, too. It is a beautiful box of goodies, Cynthia. I just want to um, make sure I'm not missing any comments here. Christy says, she just made that flag kilt, and it's gorgeous. Yay! <laughs> oh, I'm so glad you guys like it. That's so fun. I want to make sure I didn't miss anybody. Okay. It is a great giveaway, Janice. I love it. Um, so, this week, I have a really fun set of two things for you guys. So I have two fat, they're not fat quarters. You can see clearly they're not fat quarters. They're 10 inch stackers, two 10 inch stackers for you guys. How amazing is that? One of them is Hush Hush 2, which is Riley Blake's uh, second low volume collection. So all the prints in the collection are gorgeous, low volumes. They're all a little bit different, slightly different shades of whites and creams. And they're all, each one of them is designed by a different Riley Blake designer. And the one on the front is mine. These are my sweet spools. Isn't that so cute? Um, and Riley Blake is getting ready to have in the next seven or eight months, I can't remember when they come out, um, is Hush Hush 3. So a whole new low volume collection, which is amazing. But then they have a collection, and now I can't think of what it's called. It's either Lights On or Lights Off. But it's basically some of the most popular low volumes from Hush Hush, but they're white on whites. And they're gorgeous, you guys. You're going to love it. So um, if you liked Sweet Spools, but were thinking, gosh, I don't want that color, you're going to be able to get Sweet Spools with a white on white print. And also my Flamingo from Hush Hush 1, the little pink lady, that is also going to be a white on white print. So how cool is that? It's exciting. So Hush Hush 2, 10 inch stacker. Um, and these are 42 pieces, of course. And look, 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 Daisy Fields. This is getting harder and harder to find. I still have some fat quarter bundles and some other pre-cuts in my shop. So if you are in love with Daisy Fields and you feel like you need to maybe pick up a pre-cut or two, then go ahead and visit my shop. I would love it. Um, and look at the colors in Daisy Fields. It's one of my favorite collections I've designed. It's so fun with these navies, and there's actually no pink in it. It's shocking, but <laughs> it was still really fun to design. So yellows, blues, greens, um, all kinds of fun shades. And so you have these two great 10-inch stackers, and you're thinking, hmm, what should I make with this? Well, you can make, dun da da the Stacking Stars quilt pattern. This quilt pattern is really fun. It's perfect for a fast quilt and it uses two 10 inch stackers. And then you'll just need a little bit of extra fabric for the sashing and then the two borders. Here's what it looks like. There you can see it all together. So it's these little stars and you make them in a really fast way. Um, I have a cool method for making these to speed it up. And so this is really fun. And you don't have to obviously <laughs> make up this quilt with these two. If you feel like going rogue, you have 100% my permission. But that is this week's giveaway, the two 10 inch stackers and the stacking stars pattern. And if you would like to enter to win, then just leave your comment. And it can be any comment you like. Um, mean comments don't get to stay. So, <laughs> so make it a nice comment. <laughs> No, you guys can comment whatever you want. You guys know I love you. And nobody ever comments anything mean here. So, <laughs> yay, I'm so glad. Okay, you guys are the sweetest. Oh, Vicki says she has a small um, layer cake of Daisy Fields. Yes, at Backwater Shop, and I think they still have them, they have a like a half size layer quick cake. So it's instead of 42, I think it's 21 pieces in the layer cake and it's wrapped in a roll. Um, and it was in the sew sampler box from last year. And I believe there are still some of those rolls. So if you wanted to do just a small smatter, uh, you know, just a few 21 pieces instead of a full 10 inch stacker, you can check that out at Fat Quarter Shop. Those are really fun. Oh, Helen says that you guys love me. That's awesome. <laughs> Christy says she loves the colors in the Daisy Fields line. Me too. Oh, yay. You guys are the best. <laughs> All right. You guys are so fun. Thank you guys so much. Okay, are you ready to sew? I'm ready to sew. Let's sew. Okay. We're not that ready. <laughs> I got ahead of myself. 
So here is our cute little pinwheel. And the reason, as I said at the beginning of this video, this is our pinwheel block. Um, it goes at the corners of the quilt. And you can see them here. You can see that there's a pinwheel the same um, at the corners. And like I said at the beginning, I wanted this pinwheel to be not with a ton of white space. So if I had made it so that we pieced the whole pinwheel block together, there would have been quite a bit of white sashing between the stars and the flowers here. And I didn't want that to happen um, because it just kind of took away from that tight nested feeling of the quilt. So we're getting creative with how we're assembling this block. Now in here, the instructions are very easy to follow as far as, oops, I almost knocked my water over. Let's not do that. As far as how to um, assemble this pinwheel block, if you are not going to use directional fabrics. If directional fabrics make your head hurt and you just feel like, Muh, I'm not dealing with it, don't do it. <laughs> you, you should have enough pinks to make your pinwheels scrappy and um, or you can just use the fabrics that I call for in the pattern, which are the mason jar and the stripe, and just don't worry about it. I mean, these end up not that big, so I think it's about a two and a half inch square. So really, can you tell behind me on the wall that they're all the same direction? Maybe you can tell with the stripes, but if the mason jars were going every which direction, you probably wouldn't be able to see that. So if you don't feel like worrying about the directional fabrics, you have my permission to just do what you want to do. <laughs> don't feel like you have to stress. If you wanna change it out for one of the other pinks, the, the light pink, um, let me give you some ideas here. And you should have enough of these left to, um, to just play with and make them scrappy. So any one of these three pinks would work here um, and then you wouldn't have to worry about using two directional fabrics because basically what we're doing here is the mason jars are directional and the stars are direction stars stripes are directional I went patriotic there um, and so playing with two directional fabrics at the same time I'm going to show you how to do it so it's easy but I'm just here's me repeating myself over and over don't feel like you have to pick one of the other pinks or pick multiple pinks and kind of play with them and make and make your pinwheel scrappy Okay. <laughs> hey everybody. Hi Stu. No worries on being late. We're just now starting. <laughs> okay. So what we're going to do is this block is made with, um, let's see if I'm going to word this correctly. So you're going to make this section and then you're going to make another section with this piece either here or here. And the way that we're going to put these together in our quilt is these will be sewn to the star rows. We're going to add a little bit of sashing to the top and bottom here, top and bottom of the star rows. So the star rows will come in here, but then the star rows will also come in here. So we'll have star rows over here as well, like this. And so you'll sew this extra piece to the star rows so you can sew it to the um, flower block rows and then these will get sewn to the top and bottom rows. Again, you don't have to really worry about that this week because we're not doing assembly yet, but you do want to think ahead if you want to make those directional fabrics. So let's start with our cutting and I'll show you guys how to cut and then we'll talk about assembly. So what you're going to need, you're going to need, these are your A fabrics. We're using the red stripe for the A fabrics. If you're making up the, your quilt to look exactly like mine. Then these are your B fabrics. You're going to need some of these. These are the mason jar prints. Then you're going to need some background fabrics in two sizes. So these are the C and these are the D. So a little bit different sized. Again, if you um, want to sew along with us and you haven't picked up the pattern, you do need the pattern to sew along to get all these measurements and all the layouts. It really does help to have the pictures and the guides and things like that. So you can find that linked in my video description. So let's start with the pinwheel that is the center of the block. So 
it's kind of a pen wheel with extended points but really this is a pen wheel by itself so let's talk about how to get these all lined up correctly what you need to do is for each block you're going to have two B prints and two A prints. So we've got these here. So you need to draw a diagonal line. And you remember last week, if you haven't watched last week's video, you're going to want to check that out as far as how to do an even number of directional half square triangles so that the directions all work correctly. <laughs> Terry says pinwheels are great. She thinks they're cute. I think they're cute too. <laughs> okay, so on our back, our pink fabric, it's our lighter fabric. It doesn't matter which you draw on, but I always tend to draw on the lighter fabric. We're going to draw a diagonal line, but we're going to draw it with, so our fabrics are facing up. I flipped them over, so the wrong side is showing, but they're still both facing up. We're going to draw a diagonal line, but we're going to drop it opposite each other. So this one I'm going to draw this way. So going from top right to bottom left. Can you see the line? Top right to bottom left. And then this one we're going to draw the line opposite it. So top right, top left to bottom right. And I'm using the air erasable side because that line shows up a little bit better for you guys, but I would not do that normally. I would use the um, water soluble side because it lasts longer. So now we have our two lines drawn and we need to place them right sides together with our striped fabric. Now, you want your half square triangles to all face the same direction and your stripes to all face the same direction. So you need to turn your stripe pieces horizontal and then you're going to place your directional fabric on these like this. So we have the mason jars facing up, the two lines opposite each other, but both the stripe prints are horizontal. So now we're gonna sew these as half square triangles. We're gonna sew a quarter of an inch seam on either side of that marked line. So now we can go sew. Since we have multiple pieces this time, I thought I would pull out my, um, little, <laughs> my little block boards. It makes it very easy. I use Lori Holtz and they're so cute and well made. So here's our um, half square triangles that we're gonna sew up. I'm going to sew on the marked line. No, I'm not sewing on the marked line. <laughs> Do what I said a minute ago. So on either side of the marked line, we're sewing a quarter of an inch seam on either side of the marked line. And I'm going to go ahead and chain piece these. You can draw all of yours at once because um, you will have cut all of your pink and red fabrics at the same time. And you're going to use the same directions. You're going to do half of them with the line top left to bottom right and half with the line top right to bottom left. I think I said that backwards, but you know what I'm saying. <laughs> Half of your blocks will be made this way and half of them this way. So I've sewn the lines on one side and now I'm going to sew the lines on the other side. And we are just going to chain piece these together to make them, whoops, easy to, nice and quick. And because we only have to do four of these blocks, they should go together pretty quickly for you. The longest part will be kind of figuring out the layout so the block is assembled correctly. Sue says she's using some of my Dainty Daisy fabric in this quilt. I love that, Sue. Okay, so now you can see I have my marked line here and I have a seam on either side and we're gonna go ahead and cut these, press, and then trim. So that was fast, right? Let's move our wool mat over here a little bit. And give our iron a minute to heat back up. <laughs> so I'm going to cut these two at once. If you um, feel like doing that, make sure that it is lined up 
um, correctly so that you have your, you know, you don't have it turned accidentally. You don't want to cut through your seams, but you can definitely do two at once. So we're going to do a little cut here. And then we're going to press and I'm going to press all of these towards the darker red fabric. So I'm going to open these up and press. I'm just going to give a little shot with this, um, new flatter spray. Well, the flatter is not new, but the scent is new to me. <laughs> it's a new scent and my husband walked in my sewing room this last week and kind of sniffed around like, what is this new smell? And I said, I got a new starch spray. And he's like, oh, it threw me off. <laughs> he's very sensitive to smell, especially since we had COVID earlier last year. Something got messed up with his smeller and he smells weird things at times. I mean, it that was really our only um, side effect, but sometimes his smeller goes a little, a little wonky. <laughs> and I have to tell him, no, that's not a real smell. You're not really smelling that smell. So I'm pressing our cute little half square triangles and then we'll trim. You always want to make your half square triangles, if at all possible, a little bit bigger than your blocks and then trim them down because you can see when you sew them, you're sewing on the bias. So things get a little wonky sometimes and it's a good idea to always make it too big, trim it off. You don't want to trim off a ton, but if you trim off a little bit, then um, it will be a very nice tidy little square when you're done. So I'm going to go ahead and layer these together as I've shown you guys in the past. We're going to trim two at once so i've made sure my seams are nested nice and tight and we're trimming these down two three inches so i'm going to trim on two sides making sure my fingers do not extend past the end of my ruler flip that around and trim the next two sides And that gives us two cute trimmed half square triangles. And now we'll do that same thing with the other two. Just layering these together. <laughs> Let's see, Dawn says she loves flatter. Smells so good. It really does. Christy, I like the new scent. It's just, I've used pineapple for so long that it throws me off a little bit. But this scent is wild mint. And it's really nice. It's not as sweet smelling as um, the pineapple. And I, and I like the pineapple. So sweet isn't bad for me. Um, it's just different. So it's going to be, um, it's just taking me a little bit to get used to. But I do like it. It's got a little bit of a, a nice depth to it, which the pineapple is really nice. But um, yeah, I like it. All that to say. <laughs> Okay, I've trimmed my little half square triangles. And now we're going to do some half square triangle magic. And we are going to make our pinwheel with our half square triangles and our directional fabrics. Look at that, you guys. Because we sewed the stripes horizontally and we sewed the the lines opposite each other when we make four, so two half square triangles cut into four pieces, your directional fabrics will work. So isn't that just lovely? All right. <laughs> yes, Pam says she's going to try trimming two at once. Make a couple practice half square triangles and then practice that way before you cut on your, your regular fabric. So now we're gonna sew these together and um, we're going to chain piece the whole thing together. So let's sew. I'm gonna lay these out here. Nope, not like that. <laughs> I, I flipped my little thing here. There we go. Is that right? Yes, okay. See, I need my little, I left my little board over here instead of brought it back and forth. So now I'm going to take my top two. We're going to place them right sides together. And because we pressed to the dark side, 
We, these nest really nicely. And I'm going to sew the first two together. And I am going to, I always lift my machine up when I sew over a seam that's pressed towards the presser foot so I don't catch it. And then I am going to do the same thing with the second row. And I have not cut my thread in between because I don't want to have to refigure out <laughs> or mess up my, my rows when I go to sew the whole thing together. So here is our cute two sides, of two rows of our pinwheel. Now we're going to press these and then we will um, sew them together. So you're gonna press these from, um, you'll press to one side each, each row so it doesn't really matter a whole lot. Um, if you need to move it later, you can. Well, I guess you can't, but follow the pressing instructions in the pattern. <laughs> okay, so I'm pressing, I pressed on the back side and I always like to give it a little press on the front side just to make sure that those seams are as flat as they can be. And here is our cute pinwheel. Look at that, isn't that fun? So now we're going to go ahead and flip this over, sew here, and that will sew our pinwheels together. Whoops. Susan says she's not sewing along on this quilt, but she is getting ready to make two pinwheel baby quilts. Thanks for the idea. She's going to do this one instead of a regular pinwheel. Woohoo, Susan! <laughs> Yay! Okay, so now I have, um, as I showed you before, I have the two pieces and I'm going to just put them right sides together. I am lining up that seam and I'm going to sew that middle seam together. And, um, once I do that, I am gonna go ahead and trim those little uh, threads, the chain threads, so that I can press that seam open. You don't have to press it open. Um, it's entirely up to you, but there's our cute pinwheel. Isn't it fun? Okay, let's press. Rhonda says she's logged in from her car um, and she's waiting in line at the Kroger Pharmacy. <laughs> Thanks for joining us, Rhonda. And Judy says her daughter lost her sense of smell and taste from COVID a year ago and still hasn't gotten it back. Oh, I'm sorry, Judy. That's really hard. I hope it comes back for her soon. Okay, so I'm just using my thumb fingernail to kind of hold those seams and press. And I'm going to press from the front. Okay, so here's our pinwheel. Here's our pinwheel. We're ready to go on the outer sections. You're going to do the same thing. You need four points to come out from the uh, rest of the pinwheel. So you're going to um, need four points here to do this part. So you're gonna do the exact same method, only we're using two print squares and two background squares. So, um, and we want these to all be directional, to, um, regardless of where, which pinwheel we're using, the which corner. So you're going to take your two print squares, you're gonna put them face up, just like you want them, and then on your background squares, you're gonna draw your lines the same way, or you're gonna, you don't have, you can draw your, if you're using a solid fabric, you can draw all your lines the same way and then just turn your squares. But my lines go like this, here. I'll show you a little bit closer. It's not very dark. I need a darker pen, y'all. Something that's like black that will show up on my camera so that you don't have to wonder where the line is. Okay. Now let's try that again. 
here are our lines. So same method, our, our uh, mason jars are both facing up and our lines are opposite each other. So let's go sew these. asked if it was a um, regular size iron or a smaller one because it looks small on YouTube. It is a regular also iron. Not, I do have the small one. I like it, um, but I am using the regular one for our videos. So we're going to sew again on either side of our marked line. Rhonda asked, do I ever spin my uh, seams instead of press open? I don't usually, Rhonda, but you can absolutely do that if you would like to. And spinning your seams is basically just doing a small cut to kind of cut one section and then pressing your seams for, you know, one side to one side and the other side to the other side. So, um, and you can kind of press open the center. There's a few different methods for that. And if you do a search for spinning your seams, You'll, you'll be able to find info about that if you want to reduce some of the bulk in the center. You can absolutely do that, Rhonda. <laughs> Not that you needed my permission. <laughs> okay, so I am just sewing quickly a, um, a seam one quarter of an inch away from each marked line. Let's cut those apart. And now we're going to trim, press, and cut, trim, and press. Okay, so let's trim these. I'm going to go through this relatively quickly because we just, these are the exact same steps we just did for the center of the pinwheel and we're just doing it with um, one print and one background fabric. This time we're pressing towards the print fabric though because it is a little bit darker than the white fabric. Easy peasy y'all. Does it look small? There it is, you can see it a little bit better. It's pretty big, <laughs> maybe because it wasn't all fitting on camera. But I do love this iron. I like um, that it lifts because it does this cool when you let it go. It lifts up on these little feet. If my hands on it, it won't. <laughs> the feet won't stay up. But it's it's really nice. I don't put water in it. I use um, a spray bottle or I use my flatter, um, and it seems to help. I, I don't put iron, uh, water in any iron. I just feel like it keeps them, sorry, I'm off camera. It keeps them a little bit, um, gives them a longer life. But I know lots of people that do use water in them. So don't take my word as completely law. <laughs> no, don't ever do that anyway. <laughs> okay, so we pressed and we're going to trim and then we will have all the components of our blocks. And we're going to just talk about some different layout um, ways to get these angled the correct way. So here is our trimming of our first set. I love these little um, small rotary mats for just this kind of project because I tend to stand in one place at my cutting table and um, before I got these little mats, I had a lot of cuts in the same place on my cutting table and it wore out that section. So it made it harder to get nice straight cuts when I was doing, you know, cutting out my fabrics. So this way it saves my um, cutting table a little bit. And they're inexpensive too. I think this one's 14 or $15 and it's lasted me, gosh, a couple years of using it almost on a daily basis. So <laughs> that'll tell you right there how durable they are. Okay, now we've done all of our trimmings. And you can see with only four blocks, that's gonna go relatively fast. I'm getting hot, you guys. Again, if you weren't at the beginning of the video, um, I have no air conditioning in the house. Ours broke on Saturday. So if I look warm, it's because I'm warm. <laughs> but I love you guys, and I didn't want to miss our video. Uh, Rebecca asked if the Oloso has auto shutoff, and yes, it does. Um, well, 
It will, it will turn off. If you're not using it, it'll go to like a red blinking. It doesn't, you know, and then when you put your hand on it, it heats back up again. So I don't know if you consider that auto shot off. It does not stay hot. Um, but I, so I do love that feature. I leave mine plugged in, which I probably shouldn't do all the time, but I do leave it plugged in so that it, um, is all I have to do is put my hand on it and it turns back on, <laughs> which sometimes I forget to do before our videos. Okay, here is the centerpiece of every one of our four blocks. And you're going to have these little pinwheels, not that one. <laughs> this is gonna go over here. And so you're just gonna kind of look and see, okay, which one of these goes where. And we're gonna lay out our block. Sorry, I keep moving this over, but I need to move it all the way over. Here we go. We're gonna lay out our block so you guys can see the general layout of the block. Here's what it looks like. This is what that pinwheel looks like. And these pieces that are the D pieces are going to go here to make out the rest of the block. So we're gonna figure out like how many of these we need to sew. So this is what the block looks like. Now, for each, if you're, now this is for directional fabrics. Again, if you're not using directional fabrics, sew the blocks up the way the pattern shows you, and then um, you will be fine, okay? But if you want to have your pinwheels look like this with the mason jars going up on all of them and the stripes going up and down on all of them, do this. <laughs> so for the top left corner, you're going to do the block like I have the picture on today's video. So you're going to make up this. You're not going to sew these pieces to the pinwheel. This will be your pinwheel here. Let me do something really quick. I'm going to take one second and flip my, um, I have a blue background on this cutting mat and I'm going to flip it so that you can see where the white blocks are a little bit better. La, look at that, you guys. Okay, this is better. Okay, now I have to put these all back <laughs> in the place where they were. <laughs> okay, it's like a puzzle. What are those puzzles called? They're like where you get the pieces and you don't know what sizes they are. They're like tanagrams or something like that. Um, I always love those puzzles. That's kind of maybe what started my love for quilting is like, okay, I have all these triangles and these squares and how do I know what goes where? <laughs> so we want to sew our pinwheel units to our top and bottom star rows. So that means that our side star rows are only going to have a portion of our pinwheel unit. So this is the top left pinwheel unit. It's the one, let me go back here. It's this one. And it's different because the bottom piece is going to get sewn, it looks like this, and it's going to get sewn to the left, the left star block rows. Left star <laughs> block rows, okay? But if we want to make the right one, then we're going to go ahead and have our piece looks like this. We're going to sew the whole top together just like this. It's going to look just like this, but this piece will have the half square triangle in the center. So it'll look like this. So this will get sewn to the right star block row. And let me know if this is getting too confusing, okay? I don't wanna mess you guys up. Okay. <laughs> oh, Tammy says I'm a trooper for going without the air. Okay. <laughs> um, so that is the two top ones. Now for the bottom row, for the bottom section, you're going to make the bottom pinwheel like this. This is the bottom 
left pinwheel. To, can you guys see that on the video? Yes. To make this pinwheel, this one is going to have the bottom half square triangle sewn. So we're basically making this upside down. But we want to do it, oops. So it's upside down like this. But we want to be mindful of how we put it together so that our mason jars are all facing up. So you're going to make the block this way, but you're going to have it face this way with your mason jars all up. So when you sew it like this, your mason jars will all be upside down. So when you turn the block, they'll be right side up, okay? So that is that. And then the piece that gets sewn to the star block row on the bottom left is this piece with the mason jar in the center. The, the um, bottom right pinwheel is sewn exactly like the bottom left pinwheel. So this way with the alignment going like this, but you will sew the piece that gets sewn to the star block like this. Okay, <laughs> I don't want to overwhelm anybody. Again, directions in the pattern. If you don't want to worry about directional fabric, you can do it exactly as written and just turn your blocks and I promise it's not going to matter. But these are getting sewn to the star blocks and the reason we want no block here is because these are sewn to the star blocks on the sides. These are sewn, here let me get you this. This is sewn to the sides where those stars come out and then um, they kind of nest together with the yellow blocks. And I promise when you flip the page and you're looking at the pattern, you'll see how they all work together. I'm just giving you this as a reference so that when you, if you want to do the directional fabric this way, it just takes a couple extra like layout steps that's sewn together the same way but you're just going to want, you know, maybe a backing board or a section on your cutting table where you can lay them out and kind of sew them together intentionally so that those half square triangles all face the same way. Again, <laughs> you do not have to worry about this, okay? Um, okay, Leanne says, hoping to make some pinwheels for another project. Thanks for all the hints. Um, and Christy says, I don't understand. Why can't you just put the block together normal? Why are you leaving a white square off? Okay, yes. So Christy, that's because of the way the block nests together. If I didn't have, if I put the whole block together, I would have had to add quite a bit wider sashing between the star blocks and the flower blocks because we would have had to have moved that out. And I wanted it to come in tighter so that there wasn't like a, two and a half inch piece of sashing in between because the other rows are all relatively close together i wanted it to still have that same effect so that is what happened there and that's why that block is um, the block is assembled this way <laughs> and the whole border isn't as wide as the whole block right okay christy says the <laughs> brain finally got it yay Okay, Carol, I hope that, so there's three question marks. I hope that makes sense. Um, if you have more questions, I'm, I'm happy to answer them. Um, so if you missed, understood the layout, um, you can just follow the video, go back and kind of look at how the images were on my cutting mat to kind of show you the difference. It's the same exact block and the um, same pieces that you're going to make section one, section two, and section three, but it's just doing it a little bit different if you want to maintain that directional fabric thing. Okay, but again, feel free to grab one of the other pinks if you are like, poof, I'm not doing that. If you want to grab one of the other pinks but still have your stripes all going up and down, then keep your stripes horizontal when you make your half square triangles and do your lines opposite each other just like we did when we did the um, pink mason jars and the white background fabric. But you'll want your stripes to be horizontal when you lay them down and you draw your lines. So I hope <laughs> that that makes sense. Pam says it makes total sense now when you get to that part in the pattern. Okay, good. All right. I don't want to overwhelm you. I just wanted um, to have a really um, kind of fun way to put the block together. So hopefully fun doesn't equal frustrating. <laughs> Okay, you guys, that is our um, tutorial for today. I hope you had fun with it. 
Um, I am going to be here. Well, next week we're going to start talking about assembly and I'll go over that again. Um, we're going to talk about adding stashing to our blue rows and how to put these all together. And there is one little print piece that you need to add to some of the sashing. We'll talk about that next week as well. It's going to be a fun week. And these rel go together relatively fast because there are only four of them. It's kind of like our flower basket r block row uh, week. So uh, it's a little bit faster. So if you're wanting to sew um, and, you know, make up your flower, if you're, you know, on your flower rows or your star rows, this is a good week to catch up a little bit. <laughs> oh, Pamela says, clever, actually. Thank you. And Helen says, hope my AC is back on soon. Me too, Helen. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you guys have a fabulous week. Make sure you visit me on my website tomorrow, flamingotoes.com, um, and uh, check out my Christmas sew along for the Fat Quarter Shop Evergreen Mystery Sew Along. Oh, and the pattern of the month every month I do a $5 pattern of the month in my shop, um, flamingotoeshop.com. I've got it linked in the video description, and we're doing Christmas in July this month. So my Holly Jolly wreath quilt is on sale for only $5 PDF or paper. I have it shown in Christmas fabrics, but I am going to make up a Halloween version of that quilt. I can't wait. Um, I think that'll be really fun because wreaths are good for any time of year, right? Don't have to be Christmas wreaths. They can be any kind of wreath. So I think Halloween wreaths would be pretty cute. <laughs> So anyway, if you guys get stuck, send me emails, bev at flamingotoes.com. Don't forget Dolores Rast, you are our winner from last week. If you would like to be entered for this week's giveaway, make sure you leave a comment on the video and I will catch you guys next Monday when we start putting our quilts together. I hope you have a fabulous week and that you stay nice and cool. I'll talk to you later, everybody. Bye.